Now, I'm going to give you a quick look at this box of flies that I tied. Now these are basically hedgehogs, uh, or these, these, this, this four row, four rows here, these what I call uh, hog hoppers, which is a hopper type uh, hedgehog. The hedgehog style flies is the this three rows here, and uh, different colours. There's, there's many, the, that style of fly works extremely well. And um, it's a pattern that it's fished a lot, a lot in the lochs uh, here in Scotland and Ireland uh, in England, everywhere really, the, the work. It gave a great impression of a fly. Uh, there's lots of colour combinations. One of the flies I'm going to be tying is this one here. And uh, the, it's very popular at the time when I put pictures up. Uh, there was a lot of people asked for the dressing of this fly. Now I have tied it many, I tied it many years ago. And uh, I ended up doing it for trout and salmon. Uh, it was originally tied on a curved hook, uh, the way I was tying them, but this is a light wire and a medium wire hook. So it's a nice hook to tie these style of flies on. And uh, it's a medium wire hook, so it sits quite high. This is the short shank special, and it's the it's black version. There is a bronze version as well. Now you can tie it up to yourself. You, you get them barbless, uh, so if you want to go debarb them. Uh, you can do it or you can buy barbless. But anyway, it's a great wee fly to tie, so we'll zoom in a wee bit. And then we'll start tying the fly. Now, thread I'm going to be using. This is a uni thread AO and chartreuse. Now, the first thing I've got to do is get my piece of wax. I'll always put it on the side of my finger. So that I can wax my thread when I need to. And especially wax at the beginning, so there's plenty of grip. And then put down a layer of a thread along the shank. But halfway in, and I come back up, say about a head length from the eye. I'm going to tie in this is the blue J feather. Basically, come from the wing, there's the wings here, and take the feathers off. Now, what I'm going to do, you'll get at least two flies at one feather in the style I'm going to be tying. Just take away the fluff. I say I'll take about half the fibres, bring them 90 degrees from the stem, they'll line up and then we can tear them off just like that, tear it away. And then what I like to do is roll it within my fingers, just basically mixing up the fibres. Now you're looking for a length, now I'm going to tie this over the eye, now you're looking for a length at the shank, at least the shank length of this hook. Use a measure so that when you're tying a fly, you know exactly every time when you reduce it or enlarge the fly. If you use a shank length in the same style, you should have the, it should go up in proportion and down. So there's a shank length there, so we tie that forward. But what I'm going to do is encourage these fibres round the shank, just with that turn of thread all the way, and then tighten up. Now you can check to see how they're sitting, and that's ideal. Then we start to work our way down. Then we can take away the waste. Not all, just taper it up so that you've got kind of like a taper cut. Then I'm going to tie in, this is Globarite number 10 floss, it's a yellow, it's a fluorescent yellow. It's going to be, uh, there's going to be two tails on this, there's going to be a sunburst dyed tippet and obviously this floss. Now, there's eight strands of that floss, it's a thin floss, and I've brushed them together so I get a small, so a, a decent bunch of fibre for the tail. Now it's quite a short tail, so what I'm going to do is, on the way down, tie this in. Just got a wee bit of wax on my thread at this point. I'm just going to work all the way to the point where I'm in line with, just slightly by the barb. See where it's sitting. I like as it's just this hook starts to come down, and I like to put the tail slightly down into the, the bend of the hook. Then I use the angle or a cut in line with the back of the hook. And that gives you it's just a short tuft of the tail. Then we get our tip it. First thing I'm going to do is remove, I don't need it the sides, both sides. Maybe that. Now, what I do here is I hold the tips of the fibres. Come in with the tail, in with the sorry the scissors, trim away the tail, and then obviously pull away the feather and leave the fibres that you want for the tail. 
Looking for a tail length, at least the shank length. Which is on there, so a couple of turns just to secure it. Again, now trim this. You can trim it where the first part, first body, or the when you're tying the deer hair in. It's going to be about a couple of mil up. So what I'm going to do is just run the thread to that point and then come back down for the dubbing. Now the dubbing is a blend, a mix. What I've done is I like instead of adding a rib on the fly, a uh, gold rib normally, when you add in a bit of flash. Now this is this is a material from Loop. You can buy the dubbing if you've run out. Uh, but this is the the hank. Just this one's go. called Black Thunder. As you can call it, but it's a nice rainbow uh, color mix. It's beautiful. And then I mix it into a bit of this is a, a medium olive uh, seals for. And then this is what you end up with. Now use a coffee grinder to blend it together and you get a nice mix. A bit of green in that as well, so um, it's just the way it works. It's just nice. Now blending it on the, in the grinder makes it much easier to actually get it onto the thread. And you don't need a lot. Just slide it up. There's first part of the body. Now I don't mind running the thread through it once I've got it in. Now we're ready for our olive deer hair. This is the, the deer hair. This is roe deer and this is from the belly. Now what I'm going to show you is a piece that's natural. This is a natural colour here. It's very light. So it takes the dye well. And you see it's got a nice light kind of grey colour. Which is perfect. So when you dye it, this olive, you get this brightness in this fly. Uh, this hair. It makes for a great wing. So it's quite simple to, we're going to basically tie the wing in at this point and work our way up. Just repeating what we're doing. Tiny bit of dubbing, then a, a wing. So we want this tips to come towards the end of the tail, so we hold that. We trim away what I don't need. Come in here. Now there's a couple of mil or so of an area that you've tied this in. Now you go back to your dubbing. You don't need much, as I say, you don't need tiny bit. Slide it up. Now I'm turning it upside down here just to see that I've got a nice neat start. And then we work up. Take away what we don't need it and back to our deer here. Now once you get into tying, these flies they come easy. Uh, first they're a bit fiddly, but you get used to it. Tips. Basically at this point, just slightly shorter than the first segment on. So we take away, again, what we don't need. Trim that away, tie it in. And then we work our way up. And again, more dubbing. Now these flies are very popular uh, in Scotland, in Ireland, and then in England as well, Wales. So uh, I'm sure they'll be popular if you try them in other countries. Tie this in. See how it looks. Back to our dubbing. We drop over. Good if you can rotate the vise, you can see underneath and see how the things are looking. And then we can come in for a wee drop more. They don't put too much on. If you're having issues, usually the chances are that you're actually putting too much deer hair on. Then we length again, so it's slightly, so you can see it's taping towards the back. Again, take away what we don't need. What you'll have, if you try to put too much on, you'll have too much bulk. Then it'll not tie in nice and tight. Now, what I'm going to do is just tidy up some of the dubbing. Some of the longer fibres, which we don't need. Again, a wee tiny bit of dubbing. Now at this point, what I'm going to do, again check, looks okay. I'm going to draw back the blue jay. Now the easiest way to do it, to get a nice shape, I use the hairdryer. So if I just push the hairdryer on it, I can then stroke the fibres back 
and you can see how they start to sit nice it's more natural looking you just pull these fibers back hold them there you'll see your thread and then you make sure your thread's at the front any fibers going forward you can draw them back that's a nice shape Now again, we're going to put a wee tiny drop on the deer here. This just tidies things up. They don't put too much on. There's a length there. Now there's a couple of ways you could end up with a kind of elk hair head type if you want. Or sedgehog or hedgehog. Uh, it's up to yourself. You could just tie that straight one, I'll show you. And then you can just basically trim that at an angle. Just give this just a quick so it'd be like that which is makes for a nice fly just having it like that but I want a, a straight cut uh, so what I'll do is take it back and get another some more there's different ways you can tie this off the reason I want to do this I want it to be tied at the head so I want to tie in some legs as well so we're back in just draw the fibres back just get the length there it's there hold that your finger and thumb Trim away what you don't need. Slide your fingers up. Come in two or three turns. Just make sure the thread cuts into these cut ends of the deer here because that'll hold them. Make sure there's wax there at this point. And then I'm going to get legs. Now these are basically knotted, this is dyed hot orange uh, cock pheasant tail. Yeah, I've knotted these quite close towards the end because of the size of the fly. Now you, you could put six on, uh, three either side, or in this case I'm quite happy with two either side. Colour's nice and don't overdo it. Now I've taken four off and I've separated them into two. I usually like to draw my fingers through the fibres, just slightly straighten them. The, the legs towards the slightly by the end of the tail. You see I'm putting them both on at the same time, two or three turns in. At this point you can check, see the length. If it looks okay and you're happy with that, you can fold these back. And then what I'm going to do is form a nice head with the thread. A nice bright chartreuse head. Good aiming point for the fish. And then put finish and we're happy. You can then trim away the thread. These break off quite easy, so but one at a time, don't try and pull them off all at the same time. You get a neater cut if you can break them off. If you don't like doing that, just use your scissors, just trim them away. Now all we'll have to do is go to varnish, and that's my fly finished. This is the bumble version. Now, the olive vert, I would say, was in the set of flies originally I tied, was very popular up north. And uh, it was a, a lot of people kept it to themselves, and uh, because it was working so well, so not many people heard of it. But anyway, there we are. It's a lovely tie in, nice colour combination, you can't really go far wrong with. There's a the claret version I've got here to show you the claret. And there you go. You can see if we put that up. Yeah, put a wee bit of gold and magenta flash through the claret seals fur on this one. Different colour tail obviously. Uh still got the blue jay but not claret. Nice colour combination. Uh, again you can't go far wrong with it. So Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and that's the, the hedgehog, tied as a, all the bumble.